Hello students and very warm welcome uh, for design lecture. Yesterday we have started or in the last lecture we have started uh, about the design of diesel engine. Okay, let's continue that problem. So <clears throat> just quickly revise the problem. A single cylinder four stroke engine, a diesel engine that develops 10 kilowatt power and with the rotating uh, with the 1000 RPM and over possible over speed is 15 um, percent. So what we need to determine, determine both stroke of the engine, cylinder weight liner of the engine, piston piston ring and piston pin of the engine. Then uh, by selecting a proper material and cross section, we have to design a connecting rod and both uh, side of uh, big end, big eye and small eye, cap and cap bolts. So that we have designed. In previous lecture, we have uh, covered both strokes, cylinder head, wet liner and uh, piston, piston rings. Okay, so let's see further. Okay, uh, in previous lecture, uh, we haven't calculated the uh, calculation on other dimension of the piston. So these piston dimensions are the gap between the piston ring that uh, you can look at the figure. G1 is the gap between uh, uh, the ends of the piston ring. So G1 is equal to 3.8 times of TR. So 3.8 multiplied by 6, so G1 is equal to 22.8 mm. Now the gap between uh, the ring ends uh, when the ring is in a cylinder, G2, is equal to 0 0.003 into D. So it is near about 0 0.039 mm. Now the thickness between a ring and a groove that is called as a land. So TW is equal to 0 0.85 times of TA. So that is 0 0.85 multiplied by 4.8. So that TW is equal to 4.08 mm. Now next and very important component that is a design of connecting rod. So connecting rod, uh, you can look at in fig uh, refer figure number four, where the uh, simple cross section front view and the cross sectional view, that is we have <coughs> selected a cross section area that is a I okay so it is a very optimum and uh, cross section area for connecting rod now the calculating the different forces which is acting on the connecting rod first the calculation of maximum gas force fg referring kale kandagre page number 19 table number 4.10 so fg is equal to p max into pi by 4 d square so putting all the values into the equation what we get the maximum gas force is 59.7 into 10 raised to 3 newton next one the inertia force due to the mass or due to the weight or due to the continuous rotation angular momentum fi is equal to fr is equal to we plus omega square into rc into 1 plus 1 upon n where well, we is an effective mass which is in a kg which is nothing but the um, summation of w1 w2 w3 w1 is the mass of piston w2 is the mass of connecting rod and w3 is the mass of unbalanced part of the crankshaft all in a kg so first of all calculating the w1 mass of piston referring Kali Kandagre page number 20 table number 4.11 w1 is equal to m1 into pi by 4 d square 
initially assume the material for the piston is alloy aluminum alloy so the w1 is equal to 200 into pi by 4 0 0.013 bracket square so omega w1 is equal to 2.65 kg then the mass of the connecting rod m2 into pi by 4 d square here m2 value of m2 is equal to 300 similarly what we get the mass of connecting rod w2 is equal to 3.98 kg then unbalanced parts of parts of the crankshaft that is w3 m3 pi by 4 d square as we have considered this is a steel forged crank steel so the m3 is equal to 300 similarly w3 into m3 into pi by 4 d square what we get w3 is equal to 3.98 kg now the effective that is addition of these three masses the effective mass is equal to 10.61 kg now crank radius crank radius is the stroke length divided by 2 so cr is equal to l divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.13 divided by 2 that is rc is equal to crank radius 0 0.065 that is 65 mm now angular speed omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 so 2 multiplied pi n which is we have considered the maximum speed so 1150 divided by 60 so omega is equal to 120.43 radian per second now need to check the obligate ratio that n is equal to uh, crank length divided by crank radius is equal to 4 that we are going to assume so putting the all values f1 is equal to 12.5 into 10 raised to 3 newton and now next to calculate the norm normal loads which is acting on the connecting rod that is fn fn is equal to fg minus fi so fg minus fi what we get normal force normal load acting on the connecting rod that is 47.2 into 10 raised to 3 newton Now selection of the cross section area. Generally I section is chosen to reduce the weight and the manufacturer by dropping a forging process. So the material for that is mild steel uh, having design stress sigma C is equal to 80 Newton per mm square pH is 7.112 oh, sorry 122. So cross section and empirical relation between the thicknesses are shown in a figure number five. So at mid the section area is equal to 11 T square that I access is equal to 419 by 12 T raised to 4 and KXX is equal to 3.18 T square which we can find from PAG page number 7.122. Now calculating the moment of inertia is uh, at yy axis or you can say i y y sorry i x x is equal to 419 divided by 12 into 10 raised to 4 from the section i y y is equal to twice t into 4 t cube 4 t bracket cube divided by 12 plus 3 t into t cube divided by 12 so on uh, uh, when we round up this equation what we get 131 divided by 12 into 10 raised to 4 uh, t raised to 4 so the ratio of t axis upon t y y is equal to 419 divided by 12 t raised to 4 divided by 131 divided by 12 into 10 raised to 4 so i axis and i y y ratio is equal to 3.2 <coughs> but for the connecting rod it must be equally strong and both planes so i x x divided by i y y is equal to 4 hence from the calculating values it is seen that the section is weaker about x x axis and hence we will bulk about x x axis so 
while designing we need to choose a proper axis so that axis we have to consider properly because i xx is equal to four times of i y y so we need to design uh, based on the i xx cross section now calculating the thickness based on the um, based on the i xx cross section or xx cross section x uh, section uh, for buckling so considering both end of uh, big ends and by using rankin's formula pc is equal to sigma into a divided by 1 plus c divided by n dash lc divided by r x x bracket square so lc is equal to equivalent length which is equal to four times of equivalent radius so fn is equal to sigma design into a divided by 1 plus c by n dash rc bracket square upon i x x into a so putting all the values what we get t is equal to 7.51 into 10 dash to 3 minus 3 meter which is nothing but equal to t is equal to 7.51 so this is called uh, this is we have calculated based on the uh, buckling now calculating the induced bending stress in the connecting rod that is a sigma b max the maximum bending occurs when the crank is a perpendicular to the connecting rod page page number 7.122 uh, the design of connecting rod is available in phg which is ph page number 7.122 so sigma b is equal to gamma a l square omega square r divided by 9 square root of 3 into g into z x x so from phg page number 1.1 material we are selecting that is c35 steel so value of gamma is equal to 0 0.0784 newton per centimeter square that is 0 0.0784 into 10 to 6 newton meters cube a is equal to 11 t square that is 66.2 into 10 to minus 4 meter square l is equal to lc that is 4 rc that is equal to 4 into 0 0.065 that l is equal to 0 0.26 meter rc is equal to 0 0.065 meter Z axis is equal to I axis divided by Y max. So 419 divided by 12 into 10 T raised to 4 divided by 2.5 T. Uh, putting all the values what we get Z axis is equal to 5.92 into 10 raised to minus 6 mm cube. So putting all the values into the Vmax equation, what we get? The maximum bending moment is 3.42 into 10 to 6 Newton per meter square. So that is nothing but 3.42 megapascal. So load is small, hence the design is safe. So <clears throat> now we need to design um, the bearings from big end and small end okay so first of all we can we are going to design uh, the bearing for big end for the figure number 5 this is a big end and this is a small end big end is connected with the crank and small end is connected with the piston by using a piston pin or a gudgeon pin okay so calculating the diameter of the uh, diameter and the length of the big end bearing so first of all d1 l1 we are considering the subject uh, d1 uh, length l1 and diameter of the big end is d1 um, the big end is subjected to bearing pressure so fn is equal to sigma bearing 
design multiply by d1 into l1 as shown in figure number six so a level bearing pressure is equal to 108 to 126 kgf per cm square referring phg page number 7.31 so uh, we are considering it 11.5 newton per mm square l by d ratio we can choose uh, in between range of 0 0.6 to 1.5 uh, we are considering it's 1.3 so putting all the values in the form of diameter d1 uh, what we get d1 is equal to 56.2 mm we can modify the diameter based on the standard value that is 58 mm the length of the bearing pin L1 is equal to 1.3 uh, into 58 that is 75.4 mm uh, that we can modify to 76 mm so the diameter and the length of the bearing pin we get of bearing pin we have calculated now designing the cap bolt now calculating the size of the cap bolts consider the bolts are subjected into pure tension so fi that is a uh, equal to sigma t design sigma t into n into sc material we have considered is c40 n is equal to number of bolts we are considering initially number of bolts are two sc is the core area of for the bolt in mm square so we have load into the stress we need to calculate the area so 12.5 into 10 raised to 3 equal to 80 into 2 into AC. So AC what we get 78.125 mm square. Referring PSG page number 5.42 and selecting the standard bolt size that is M12 based on the area. So M12 into 1.75 that is uh, AC is equal to 84.3 mm square which is greater than the calculated one so now next one is a design of cap but for calculating the uh, cap thickness we need to consider cap subjected for bending stress L E is the distance between a center of the poles and L is equal to D plus twice of the thickness of bush plus the bolt diameter plus twice of uh, twice into the clearance. So thickness of bush is considered as a 2 mm, uh, bolt diameter that is 12 mm, uh, clearance which, which we are considering uh, that is uh, 5 mm. So the total distance uh, or you can say the distance between uh, center distance between the two bolts are 84 mm. Assuming the triangular loading condition, which is shown in figure number eight, M max is equal to Fi into Le by six. So 12.5 into 10 raised to three into 84 by six. What do you get? The maximum permanent stress is available 80 Newton per mm square. Z is equal to I by Y, that is L1 T cube divided by 12, divided by T by two, so L1 T square divided by 6. So putting all the values, what we get? Z is equal to 12.67 T square. <clears throat> now sigma B is equal to Fi. Divided by Z. So Fi is equal to 175 into 10 raised to 3 and z is equal to 12.67 t square sigma b we know that 80 mm so we can calculate the thickness of the cap that t is equal to 13.14 mm modify this thickness to the 14 or 15 okay so as per the criteria uh, as per the requirement we have calculated all the dimensions which is uh, said in the problem so i hope you have understood uh, the design process and design procedure uh, this design is available uh, the link is available in the description box so you can download the design uh, from uh, slide share if you like you can uh, subscribe the channel okay so thank you very much in next lecture, uh, we will discuss the problem on petrol engine.
okay meanwhile i will share that design also so thank you very much for joining